good to have you with us. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Investor's Guide, a show where we help you understand how to go about all of your financial planning. Now, on today's show, we're going to talk about Budget 2021, which was recently announced, and what impact has that had on your investments, on the, uh, the taxation that you have to pay, all of that, and what exactly is it going to, uh, kind of impact is it going to have as far as uh, the, the equity markets itself are concerned. Uh, and joining me to understand a little bit more is Firoz Aziz of Anand Rati Wealth Management. Uh, Firoz, uh, of course, this, uh, as far as the equity markets are concerned, uh, this budget has, uh, you know, had a huge impact and uh, very positively taken, which doesn't really happen very often, uh, you know, when we look at uh, past budgets as well. But before we get into the specifics, uh, I want to first ask you your overall takeaways you know, the things that stood out for you most uh, in this budget? Uh, Avni, you're so right. I think last couple of budgets, we used to a little subdued reaction from the equity markets. Last two budgets, we saw some degree of correction on the budget day uh, and subsequently as well for the markets. Of course, this budget has uh, several positives. Uh, it's been a very immensely clean and a transparent budget. Uh, not very complex, very easily addable numbers, uh, nothing uh, overstretched or overstated. So I think transparency, uh, growth orientation, uh, clean tax mechanism, there are several things which stand out, but I think from an equity market standpoint, uh, there are uh, three, four things which are important. Uh, basically, uh, let me start with uh, speaking on growth. Uh, basically, there has been a huge momentum on growth of the economy. And when uh, growth of the economy is in question, the government needs to spend capital expenditure. It needs to spend in creating assets uh, rather than revenue expenditure. So the government has spent uh, or at least projected to spend 26% more in the next financial year, FY22, uh, in the capital expenditure head, uh, which is a very, very positive thing. Capital expenditure by which I mean road, transport, infrastructure, rural infrastructure, and several other things. That I think has the largest multiplier effect in the economic growth. Almost three to four times uh, that gets added to the economy. Uh, I think that's one big positive. Okay. Uh, now, moving on to some of the other important announcements uh, that came in here. One, of course, is uh, as far as the financial sector itself is concerned and banks are concerned, a bad bank of sorts has been set up and even uh, including the entire disinvestment target uh, of the uh, government at this point in time, which includes, uh, you know, the... Uh, privatization of two banks as well as an insurance company, the IPO of LIC. So all of these are big announcements that have uh, come in this time. Yes, Avni, if we break this down into two components, one is the strength of the financial system or the Indian financial sector uh, and disinvestment, which is one more uh, positive. I think uh, the fact that uh, financial sector is expected to get capitalized with 20,000 more crores, which automatically implies almost about a lakh and a half uh, thousand crores more uh, to lend if you look at a leverage of seven times. So I think that's one big positive. Uh, the second big positive is uh, in in instead of speaking disinvestment, this time the language and the narrative was privatization, which is far beyond uh, disinvestment. Disinvestment is a, say, a, a small stake sale. Privatization is trying to give away control. Uh, I think that's a very, very big positive for the financial services sector. And I think the ARC, the asset restructuring company or the bad bank as it's also called in the current nomenclature, uh, will definitely help clean up the mess of the NPA uh, over a period of time, of course, uh, but has been collected over the years. I think that cleansing is what the banking system needed uh, to be able to have the courage to lend further. Today what's happening is interest rates are lower, but the banking system does not have the courage to lend. I think once this is off their head uh, and gets uh, uh, carved out in a separate uh, bank, I think that will uh, really, really open up the risk taking capability of the Indian financial sector, which is a prime driver of the economic growth. Yes, absolutely. And in turn, you know, eventually, obviously, uh, help uh, better returns of uh, investors as well, especially when it comes to these uh, specific sectors. Uh, the other part, of course, Feroz, is uh, the push that has happened as far as uh, manufacturing is concerned, infrastructure spending is concerned. Uh, and we are seeing this entire production-linked incentive scheme, which has now been extended to uh, other sectors as well. And all of this will perhaps uh, result in uh, creation of more jobs as well. Uh, but this is also going to have a very strong long-term uh, impact on the economy. 
Yes, Savni, I think uh, it was very important and it was, it was to see whether the budget uh, would put where the ma uh, money and the mouth has to be at the same place. Like we've been speaking of Atma Nirbhar, we want to be a manufacturing hub, but there has to be action and intent, uh, which I think got expressed categorically uh, in this budget, which I think is almost like two lakh crores to be given as production linked incentives over the next five years. That definitely uh, helps us uh, compete globally uh, from a manufacturing hub standpoint. And I think uh, from a disinvestment standpoint also, wanting to privatize two banks and one uh, general insurance company and the LIC IPO itself uh, is going to be large enough uh, with almost 20, 25 crore uh, policy holders. That's a very large uh, financial institution. I think disinvesting using an IPO route uh, can create a huge amount of uh, uh, surplus uh, from this disinvestment target and I think it will get achieved unlike the last year uh, where we couldn't achieve the disinvestment target. Hmm. Uh, now, the other part uh, of the budget, uh, Firoz, is as far as the personal taxation bit is concerned, and there are always huge expectations on that front. This time round, uh, we didn't really see too much except a little bit of tinkering here and there. Uh, a, were you disappointed? And B, the other way to look at it, of course, is there was no additional burden put in terms of, you know, the COVID cess that was being, uh, uh, you know, expected very widely. Yes, Avani, this was a huge pleasant surprise. Uh, that there was no tinkering across uh, strata of taxpayers. There was no increase in taxation in a year where we had a 9.5% or we project to have a 9.5% fiscal deficit as a percentage of GDP. And next year also, I think 6.8 is a large number, which speaks of the, uh, of the loose handedness and the intent to spend and still not tamper with the taxation. And uh, the only cess, which was the agri cess, also has been mitigated with excise duty reductions, not impacting inflation. I, I, think, I think it's so logical uh, to have a consistent tax regime. You can't have a moving goalpost every single year uh, from a taxation standpoint. So simplicity, uh, I think, and not, uh, not tampering with it is, is a very big advantage. Of course, people might have had ex expectations of some chops. Uh, this year as well, like in the past, but uh, not having any change or increase itself is a big gift uh, to my mind. Okay. Uh, and, and among the uh, small changes that were announced, one is uh, the payment of tax on uh, interest if the PF contribution is more than two and a half lakh. That was uh, one important change that has come in and also, uh, you know, some sort of relief for pensioners uh, and uh, those who are above 75 uh, in terms of filing income tax returns. These were two of the, uh, you know, important changes coming in. Yes, Avni, I'm not very excited about the 75 year plus uh, exemption of filing income tax return, which is hmm. just a logistical gift. It is not any tax reduction. And now we have a confusion with respect to 60 plus as senior citizens, 80 plus as super senior. Now we have another category, 75 year plus, and there also there's no tax discount. It's just that you will not have to file the return. So it, it, uh, it actually benefits a very small group and that too just benefits in terms of uh, not having more paperwork to do. Uh, so that's not something which I'm excited about. Looks like a big uh, headline, uh, but I think it's uh, a, a little more of uh, optical value than actual value. Uh, yeah. What uh, on the PF side, like you Avni mentioned, yeah. uh, the interest component will now get taxed uh, beyond two and a half lakhs. Uh, there also there is no problem because uh, even if a person earns 40 lakh rupees, and uh, uh, contributes three lakhs to PF, uh, the 50,000 rupees, which is greater than two and a half lakhs, gets taxed, and that's only a 4,200 rupee impact, even if, you, if your salary is 40 lakhs, approximately. Uh, so I think that's not a big thing. But in PF, we are all have to remember that we get almost one and a half, two percent more. Uh, mm. That's a good gift anyway. Even if it is taxable, I would continue to uh, put my PF as I would uh, in the past. All right, uh, Feroz, uh, we'll have to leave it there. Thank you so much for joining us and uh, breaking down uh, the budget 2021 for us.